Alright, congratulations, you have decided to start learning the most awesome instrument in the world. That is a scientific fact. So, uh, you're probably wondering, how do I get started? Well, I'm going to show you. Okay, we're going to go through the basics of the instrument and, and where to begin. Alright, so, first and foremost, let's look at the instrument itself, the bagpipes. Now, here I have my own bagpipes. They are currently not inflated, they're not making any sound as a result. But let's look at the different components, okay? The primary component in the bagpipe, hence what gives it its name, the bag, okay? Now underneath this velvet exterior, if I pull this back, this is the actual bag itself. This inflates with air, the air escapes from the bag, passes through the pipes, makes the sound. There you go, no mystery there. The first step in this process, this is the blowpipe, this goes into your mouth, okay? You blow air in, inflates the bag, right? There's a valve inside the blowpipe, which allows air to pass this way into the bag, but um, it closes shut when air tries to escape back out again. Um, having said that, of course, um, I have had a few issues of late where uh, the valve has not been doing its job and it makes a rather amusing fart noise, okay? Next part, these three pipes here, these are called the drones, okay? You have two tenor drones and you have one bass drone, okay? The bass drone is enormous and that sits resting on your shoulder like that, okay? They're all tuned to each other, we're not going to talk about tuning just now, but what the drones do is they create a, a continuous, uh, what's called a pedal, it's just a noise, a sound, a continuous chord in the background which uh, provides a, an accompaniment to the actual tune that's coming at the instrument. Alright, and arguably the most important part of the bagpipe, this is the chanter. This is what actually creates the tune, okay? Never mind the drones, they just create a continuous accompanying tone in the background. This is where the actual sound of the, the melodies comes from, okay? Now, I'm not going to go into how to play the bagpipes at the moment because that's something that's a bit beyond the, the, the scope of this video. But what you do need to know is that there are, there are four reeds in bagpipes. Um, a reed is simply a device which vibrates and that's what creates the sound, okay? Um, the, the length of the, the pipes that it comes through, that actually changes the pitch of the sound. Um, and certainly with the case of the chanter, you know, where you place your fingers on the stock is what creates a particular note pitch, right? Um, when you play the bagpipes, you have to get the bag to a certain air pressure before the drones will start to vibrate. Um, and then again, you have to achieve a particular pressure for those drones to actually play in tune, okay? If there's not enough air passing over them, they just sound a bit funny, okay? Um, and then beyond that, the, uh, the reed on the chanter stock actually requires a much higher air pressure beyond that before that will start vibrating. Once you have the air pressure correct and you can continue the airflow through the instrument, that's when you get the, the bagpipe sound, okay? Um, don't worry about that just yet, but that's how the mechanics of the instrument work, okay? The first thing you're going to need to do if you want to learn this instrument, before you end up shelling out several hundred pounds, on a set of bagpipes because that's what they cost, right? For a good set. Never mind these these crappy little shops that you're going to find on on the Royal Mile in Edinburgh, or these little tourist traps that sell cheap bagpipes. Okay, those aren't bagpipes. Okay, those are novelty items. You want a proper instrument? Go to a proper bagpipe maker. Get a decent set. Okay. All right. First thing you're going to need to get though, before you begin your career in playing bagpipes is this. It's called a practice chanter, alright? It's more or less a scaled down version of the chanter from the actual bagpipes themselves. As you can see, um, this is the chanter from the bagpipe. It's actually quite considerably longer than the practice chanter itself, given the fact that this part here, this small area between my fingers, is the fingerboard, but over here, this is the fingerboard here, okay? Okay, the reason why you need this is you learn to play tunes on this, okay? What you do is you learn the tunes and you commit them to muscle memory. You do that without looking at your fingers, okay? It's just like learning to drive a car. Once you know how to change gear without looking or where everything else is, you can apply that to any vehicle. It doesn't matter who made it or what kind of car it is, 
it's going to be the same principle, right? Um, chanters come in different shapes and sizes. I'm not going to recommend any particular brand. Mine is uh, is a plastic chanter. Um, I've had it for nearly 20 years. It's still fantastic. Um, so you know, go and do some research. You get ones made of wood. You get ones with nice fancy trims in them. Really entirely up to yourself. But fundamentally, you're going to apply the same basic theory from chanter to chanter. Okay. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that, uh, like, you graduate from playing on the chanter to the bagpipes, and then you never have to worry about this again. That's nonsense. Okay, you're going to have this for the rest of your life, and the reason being is because it doesn't matter whether you're a beginner or an advanced player. If you're going to be learning a new a new tune, all right, you're going to want to practice on this first. Okay, um, there's a few reasons for this. First and foremost, as you're probably well aware, bagpipes are extremely loud. Okay, there is no volume control on a bagpipes, right? Once they start playing normally, you can't turn them down. And if you're learning to play a brand new instrument, a, a brand new tune, you're not going to want to do that with the bagpipes, okay? Because it's not practical. Um, another reason is the fact that you know when you're playing the bagpipes, you want to actually have the the, the tune memorized because you've got so many other things to think about. You've got to think about how much air you're blowing in, you've got to think about synchronizing the, the gentle squeeze of the bag to keep the airflow moving smoothly, okay? You don't want to have to be reading sheet music at the time, right? That's why this is extremely practical. It's so much quieter and so much more compact. Um, you can also get electronic versions of these, um, which I don't recommend for beginners. Uh, you know, you want to learn actually how to blow the instrument properly. You're going to want to, to develop some muscular strength around here, which I'm going to come back to. Um, but you know, that option is available, so if you're travelling and you don't want to disturb anyone, you can just simply plug a set of headphones in, um, and all you have to do is actually just move your fingers and play the tunes, okay? But this is something that's going to stick with you for life, alright? Now, I just want to illustrate the difference between the sound that these make. Um, this sounds radically different to the sound coming out of a bagpipes chanter, um, which, you know, the practice chanter sounds like this. Alright, now compare that with the chanter from the actual bagpipe. Completely different.